Hello, this is Sam Simon, also known as Dementia Man, and welcome to the video blog for April 22nd, 2024. It's the day or the beginning this evening of the Jewish Holy Day or Holy Period of Passover. You may not know it, I'm Jewish. And we are very busy at our household getting ready to host a Seder for 13 people. Wow. You know, I was thinking about this process getting ready. It's more than thinking about it. You're going to hear in a moment what it's like with a neurocognitive disorder, minor still, or also something called D, you know, the dementia word, uh, preparing for Seder, as we have done for 20 years or more, off and on, almost always being the host. You know, it happens so often now, as I've been doing this work for three or four years, that people will see me and hear me talk, hear this blog, that he doesn't have. Alzheimer's, he doesn't have the D word. He's not cognitively impaired. I sound perfectly normal. Sometimes. And in fact, one of the thoughts right now and triggered by, and all of this is triggered by our preparation yesterday, Susan and I, getting prepared, a lot of the traditional dishes that we've done for years and years and years for tonight's Seder. That we made a big decision. You'll hear it in a moment. But we do things almost you know, routinely, as a matter of fact. As my own challenges began, I was told that once you're diagnosed, and or it's common knowledge that once you're diagnosed, you'll look back, if I look back, right, over your last few years and see it coming. You just don't recognize it right away. And it is still happening. People don't understand that the actual diagnosis again of the disease doesn't doesn't happen until somewhat early but into the disease i know i had a risk for the disease but my own diagnosis probably came um you know it's hard to know the things had been happening so if you see the play and i hope you can you do and i hope you can bring it to a venue near you um You'll, you'll hear stories about how I started driving on the wrong side of the street and how I was confused about this and that. It was interesting. One of the brightest examples of that that I talk about is after getting the formal diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment, which was two years before I was told that the cause of the impairment is Alzheimer's disease. I had not done my Quicken journal or using the Quicken software every every Sunday for years and years, decades. I would just fill in the week's expenses into my Quicken. I mean, instead of trying to show you how I'm typing, I would just type and do my Quicken, right? But, you know, for an entire year, it was, I'll get to it. I, I'm going to do it. I'll get to it. Oh, I missed last week. I'll get to it. And, I, and once I got the diagnosis, I realized I can't do that anymore. It's just too hard. Could I could I sit down and figure it out and redo it? Probably, maybe over days and weeks and have somebody help me. Well, no, we accommodate that by having an hired and spending money on a um, bookkeeper who comes to our home and picks up things. And they work with many older people with cognitive decline. So this year, um, been... A wonderful year in the way in that my the play Dementia Man is taking off and I'm myself surprised. It's actually very helpful. It takes my mind off of the okay, it's funny. Doing my play takes my mind off the fact that I have Alzheimer's. All right, you figured that out. Um, but it does. It gives me something so important to do. And then we go back to daily activity, the routine stuff. <clears throat> so we decided, Susan and I. And we were going to host Seder again. We did it actually last year. Last year we had, I didn't want to say, 20 people in our home on this, on this 
huge ritual meal and ceremony. There's a unique prayer book. It's called the Haggadah. And you have a, this ritual. You have scribed prayers. So yes, yesterday, we're only having 13 tonight. And so yesterday, we were working a way that let's prepare most of the stuff today. And then tomorrow, we can do the table. And people will be bringing some themselves. Some of our guests will be bringing their own dishes. And wow, I did not see this coming. We'd done it last year. And one of the things you have at the meal is it's called a shank bone. It's to remember that there was a lamb's shank that was taken around Egypt and marking the house of the Jews. So when the evil spirit came around to cause the death of the firstborn of the Egyptians, it would pass by, pass over the homes of the Jewish residents. But we prepare it in a particular way. How do we do it? Susan and I have some loud exchanges. I don't want to call them screams, but sometimes. This way, that way, no, and it's not done. How do we, can you put it under there? No, that's not under there. You put it this way. What does roasting really mean? Really, seriously, that conversation in this household happened yesterday. Um, and then I I always make a, uh, a dish, often it's stuffing for a turkey. We're not having turkey, but it is a, um, it's called a brothel. Um, bread dish um and like all right do it every year I use it for stuffing this time we'll just have it on a plate where's the recipe what book do i use where's the book where's the book what do we do i'm talking about almost an hour opening different cook about books because we're really old and we have we have book shelves full with well, at least two cook old cookbooks i got my mother's world war ii cookbook up there um and i finally find it and then now, all right, we're going to have to uh, put the farfel, yeah, it's farfel, put it in a bowl. And then I'm going, and then you um, put the, uh, uh, chopped celery and um, other things in, in, in a pan and heat them up. And then, then you're supposed to pour the uh, and, uh, chicken broth and, you know, on top of the farfel, which is, you know, like broken up matzah. And I'm going around, wait a minute, where, where, where do I pour this into? Well, I'd already placed the box in the farfel, or not the box, but the bowl. Anyway, it was, it was just getting too hard. And there was this moment, Susan and I, literally moving around, we have a very good size, nice size kitchen, big island. And we're going around and finally, she sees me getting frustrated. We look at each other. And it almost as if we were reading each other's mind. This is the last time we have to do this. You know, we're going to enter our 79th year. We have children nearby. We have friends. We don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> and it isn't just normal aging. It's clearly, for me, I just can't figure this out anymore. And it's too hard to figure it out. And then there's this level of uncertainty that what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing. And then second guessing. So the anxiety that it creates, the challenge it creates for Susan, because my frustration comes out often loudly. Well, how the hell do I do this? You know, um, and you know, even the little things. Well, look, will this bowl work in the oven. No, no, that's right. It doesn't work in the microwave, but it works in the oven. And what does it mean to roast versus, um, can't even remember the other word, uh, do some bake versus what the other thing is. And again, these are things that were just second nature for years and years and years. And now they become just too hard to do. And this is in part to the answer to the question we get so often, even we had a beautiful performance in, a, in um, Palisades, New York, uh, this past Saturday afternoon in a, ch in a church that was built in 1863. And, you know, the, the questions we get from the audience, what's it like? And, and how do you know that it's something different? And of course, the perennial, as I said, as I started, oh, you don't have that. Well, I do have that. <laughs> And 
I'm so glad to be able that I have now still the ability to get on stage, hold my script up and do a play. And I hope to be able to do that. I'm now convinced that doing that has given me purpose and energy and has extended my cognitive or balanced it out and has allowed me to keep doing this for a while. But there are things that are, there are changes. And when you, if you know somebody or who's going down the, the same path, please, please don't challenge that they have it. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't have any advance. There's no one way to do this. Uh, being there for someone, uh, letting them know that, that they can ask you for help and um, just being as support, supportive as possible. But this is going to be tonight our last Seder. You know, there's all sorts of historic significance to that, but I'm not going there. Um, so it'll be even more special. There is another thing I did. So yesterday, not only did we make that mutual declaration, I sent an email to my son who will be here. He's just a young 53 now. Um, he's going to lead it. You know. You know, historically, the oldest person at the table leads the Seder. Well, he gets the privilege. Um, and it's all good. And it's all good. We're looking forward to it. And for our Jewish followers, uh, Pesach Semea, a wonderful pa Passover. And for those of you who are Jewish, well, I hope you can say that to your Jewish friends. Hag Pesach Sameach. And I, often this coincides with Easter, but that was a while ago. So anyway, I hope to see you again next week with new stories of new adventures in this journey. So I hope you've enjoyed this pre-Seder blog. And please visit our website, DementiaMan.com. And I don't know if you know this, listen, all donations to help us reach everybody who needs to see this show are tax deductible. If you click on the donate button, uh, you can help support bringing Dementia Man to everyone who needs to see it. Have a great week.